Did you think that this case would come back up in the way that it has? No, I really didn't think it would come back, but I knew something would happen. I just had that feeling mm -hmm. about it. I didn't know if he would get an appeal or what, but I was always waiting on it. That's the beauty of writing true crime, is that you never know what the real end is. This is a storage bin that I, I lease for all my book material. An undisclosed location. And so, how long has the bureau stuff been in? Bureau stuff has been in here since 1995. 1995. So, so let's go find out what we see in here. And there it is. And as a journalist, I wanted to get to the story behind the story. Who is this kid? Who is this kid? And what were the rights of the parents? And their responsibilities and how it could have been prevented. All right, let's see what you got. Okay. These are the police reports of the task force that I was able to obtain of the day-by-day -day investigation. Anything that still sticks out in your mind? Anything that sticks out in my mind, it was like this was a very well-calculated murder. Mm -hmm. There were so many things that didn't coincide with a burglar. And you know, none of it made sense. Right, and Nancy's final message, what was she trying to say? Mm -hmm. Family says that she was saying, I love you. These are... The psychiatric files of David Burrell. All right. From Charter Barkley. After he poisoned, attempted to poison his mother and his sister and brother and his whole family, his father, uh, with tainted milk, with wood alcohol. Now, how did you get your hands on David? I called one of my friends in the clerk's office and I said, I'm aware of a lawsuit that has been filed against David Burrell and his family. Could you please keep your eyes open? For anything that comes in there that I should be aware of because I'm writing a book on David Burrell. And so my source, I think maybe a month later, I get a phone call saying, you better get down here right now. I said, why? What do you got? And she says, I, I don't believe what it is. She said, I don't know how anybody would subpoena psychiatric records and they would also deliver it to the clerk's office, to the file. Well, especially if he was a juvenile. She said, better get here now with a checkbook so you can Xerox. If it wasn't for the psychiatric records, we would never have had such a book like Iron King mm -hmm. because this made it. This really traced you inside the mind. And of course, you, being a journalist yourself, mm -hmm. you want to be inside the mind of the killer. Reading your book was very interesting. It was the timeline of a murder without flashback. It was in real, it felt like you were reading real time news reports as it was happening. I recognized one of these pictures. These are some pictures of his room. I have David's uh, mugshot pictures here. And now that we're standing here with all of your papers and your research, and you save everything just in case, did you think that you would ever be looking at the material again because the court case might come up giving him a chance to get out? Never thought of that. Never, ever thought of that. But I'll be honest, when I met with him in 95, uh, this was a really weird conversation. And I said, well, look, David, unless you cooperate with the authorities and confess, the only way you're going to get out of here is in a pine box. And then he looked at me. He opened up the can of Coke that I bought him, and he said, I'm going to get out of here by the time I'm 50. So you know what? I think David Burrell's prediction, I hope it's not true.